What's up guys and welcome to a brand new series on the channel. We're gonna call it Explaining and Exposing Magic. In this series, we're gonna take a look at some of the most viral magic acts out there and using one of the greatest brains in magic. Uh, we're gonna break them down and expose them and show the inner workings of how all these tricks are done. Now, some of you guys probably don't like the idea of this video, you know, exposing magic, but here's the thing. If you wanna make magic better, you want the, the art form as a whole to improve, it's kind of like building a muscle. You gotta break it down to build it up even stronger. We wanna prevent magicians from going on TV shows and bringing that weak sauce <clears throat> and making us look bad. All right, so hopefully you tune in, stay tuned. We're gonna learn some things together and uh, figure out this magic act. As you can tell from the title of the video, today we're gonna to be breaking down this segment from America's Got Talent. It was a magic act performed by a magician called Shin Lim. Now, if you've never watched America's Got Talent before, basically it's the world's biggest talent show, but what makes the story so great on it and what makes it such an awesome show is the stories that you, you see. And what's so important is that these people who get to go on the show, they're completely unknown. No one's ever heard of them before. And this show is their one opportunity to showcase their talents to a really big audience. Because everyone on the show has never had the opportunity to perform for a big audience before. Like take this guy named Shin Lim before. I've never heard of him before. I don't think he has any sort of footing in the magic community. So it's really great that he can come on America's Got Talent and try and find his footing and maybe, you know, establish himself in this community to build a career here. Uh, I don't know much about him, obviously a complete amateur. All I know he's a magician who's coming on the show. I haven't watched this video before. So let's see what he's got. Let's see what the amateur can bring to the table. If he can get past one of the best minds in magic. Let's watch it. All right, so I got the video queued up right here. Uh, let's just check it out together and we'll uh, react to it in real time. Let's, uh, let's full screen this. We gotta make sure we see all the details. Nice judge, okay. I like his appearance. He dressed well. Just pick one. Anyone. Right, looks like there's no force there. Just a normal selection. Oh, you can see yeah. it. Oh, okay. Queens. Can you write your name? Okay. Classic and magic, obviously the signature. Okay, let's watch this close. Hold up. First, right off the bat, I noticed something. Uh, right off the bat, if you zoom in on the deck, uh, you're gonna see there's something really looking funny about it. Uh, right in the middle there. It's a shame. He's using a bicycle deck. It's a completely amateur move, and I can't believe you're coming on the America's Got Talent talent show with a standard deck of bicycle playing cards. Everyone knows that you cannot perform good magic without a thirty-dollar deck. It's really a shame. All right, I don't see anything wrong with this though. Um, let's just continue on and see what else he's got. Okay, we have a nice ambitious routine. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that move is called, it's called the Erndazian uh, Clip Shift 180 degree change. Uh, if you don't know how it looks like, I'll show you here right now. So what he does is he takes, let's say, the seven of hearts and puts it in to the deck. And when he puts it into the deck, he leaves this break, right? And then it's basically like a scissor cut, right? And you, you wave your hand over the scissor cut and then bam, uh, the card goes to the top. Um, it was really hard for me to do for that angle. I'm actually really good at it, but of course I'm really good at it, but you know, you get the point. It was just a simple sleight of hand move. So let's see what else he's got. Uh, pretty amateur so far, I would say. Now, let's rewind this and I'm gonna break it down for you because a lot's going on here, okay? All right, so we rewind it. I wanna show you something really here. There's a switch that happens when we lift the card up, okay? And what's happening is if we uh, look this up really quick, let's see this. Uh, card temporary tattoos. What you're gonna see is that playing cards uh, actually have a very common tattoo. And what I'm saying is, 
I would not be surprised since bicycle is such a common gimmick that actually what's happening here is he fashioned a gimmick where the queen of spades is a temporary tattoo. So it's not actually a blank card that he's holding. It's a car with a queen of spades temporary tattoo. This is important because when we come back to the video, you're going to see, right? Watch right there. The left hand is actually applying pressure. So he has it underneath his chest, right? And he's pushing down to apply the tattoo. Now you might wonder, well, what's, what's activating the tattoo? Well, when you're performing in front of thousands of people, like Shinlim is doing probably for the first time, uh, I'm sure he's never performed in front of a crowd this big before. Uh, so he's probably got a lot of anxiety, which is causing some natural perspiration. So that natural perspiration is going to activate the ink on the card. You press down, apply the ink. Okay. Then when he removes, of course, the tattoo is going to be gone. The card is going to be blank. So watch this. The tattoo has been removed off of the card. And uh, bam, there you go. There's a tattoo. Now I know what some of you guys are saying. They're saying, Chandler, that could just be a real tattoo. This will get past some of you. She signed her name at the top, but the signature isn't on the tattoo. So how could it be a real tattoo? All right. See, in order to break down these matters, you got to think deeper. You got to think outside the box. It doesn't come easy. Like I said, I am one of the greatest minds in all of magic. I think differently. So amateurs like this are really easy to pick apart. So let's just continue off the trick and see if he has any more, you know, interesting maneuvers here. What we have here is a classic cards and mouse thing. Um, very classical magic. And this is one of the first things that I've seen him do that I actually am like, wow, it's a great trick. Because what we in the business call a longer con, which means he was dedicated to doing this trick. So actually, uh, he had the card in his mouth the entire time, okay? He had the card in his mouth the entire time, and it's made their action. <laughs> he comes up here, right? It's in his mouth the whole time, and that's when he spits it out, okay? Now, what's important here is, in fast forwarding and rewinding, I can't find where he put the card in his mouth, right? But, um, there's a lot of camera cuts and angle changes, like, boom, ready? Camera cut, and I'm a camera cut, and I'm assuming in those camera cuts that he stuck the card in his mouth. In fact, in order to prove a point to you guys, this entire video... I've actually had a card in my mouth the whole time, and uh, you can tell that it looks just like his when you take it out of your mouth, and um, all it takes is you have to learn how to talk with a card in your mouth, and you know no one's going to notice that you had the card in your mouth the whole time, so that's actually the most impressive thing he's done so far, just because of the endurance that it takes to do something like that uh, on camera and in front of a live audience, so much respect for Shin for having the card in his mouth the entire time because that's obviously how he did it right there. It's just a, uh, you know, he saw she had the queen of space, he put the card in his mouth, the camera cut, and then bam, you throw it up and uh, bam, that's how you do it. So, like I said, it's pretty simple to figure out, but I do respect his dedication. So let's continue on with the clip. Okay, so he changed the card's color, okay. Oh, okay. All right. The queen. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, I know that probably went way over some of your guys' heads, but like I said, uh, you know, he's doing a great job of fooling the amateurs out there as an amateur himself, but I doubt it could get past me. So actually, this is one of the very fundamental color changes in magic. In fact, Let's uh, search it up. You guys know the phrase, uh, buy a man a fish and he can eat for a day, and then teach a man to fish, he'll, he'll eat for a lifetime. It goes something like that. Well, I'm gonna show you guys, if you're ever confused by uh, this magic, how you can figure it out like I do, how my brain works. So, he changed a card's color, right? So let's just go to YouTube, and uh, what we're gonna do is, hmm. All right, let's Google search how to change card Color, disturb, reality, all right. 
Okay. I think this one's it. Sure. Alright, let's, let's look through it really quick. I don't actually watch tutorials because it's too easy. So I just like to skip to the part where it actually happens. So you have the card. Okay, and then you shake it and turn it. Okay, so that's how it works, right? So I want you to apply this to what uh, Shin Lim just did in his act, okay? So let's rewind it a little bit. If you watch close, uh, right before he changes the card's color. Oh my gosh. Okay, so right here. Bam. Watch close. We're going to take this uh, seven of hearts and four diamonds and you hold it like that and just imagine that it just changed like that. So you might be thinking, but Chandler, he did it with the whole deck. True. So the color changing thing happens. So watch, watch, it's red and it's blue. So it's really simple. That's what he did right there. Now, the hard part is, the impressive part is he did it with the entire deck. That might confuse you at first, but what you have to do is just take that principle and apply it to the whole deck. So imagine this side of the deck is blue, this side of the deck is red, okay? You just have to do that, that switch change, right? And do it the whole deck. So if you watch close, ready? It's going through. And it's all red. When he puts the cards down, okay? Watch this close, we wanna make sure it's in focus. Imagine this part's red, this part's blue. I don't feel like making a gimmick right now, okay? What you're gonna do is do the shake, do the shake change, right? And then look, the whole cards change, but you're doing it the whole deck and then when you spread it out. Now obviously, uh, it was a little hard to do it there because of the camera angle, like, you know, I can do it normally. It's just the camera angle that's causing me trouble and I, I've barely practiced it, but I'm sure within like, you know, 15 seconds of practice, I could get that down. It's actually pretty simple. So uh, there you go, that's how that's done. And hopefully I taught you how you can uh, learn more about magic yourself. So let's just continue to the video. You know what I really like about this guy? Look at this guy. He has so much swag and performing charisma. Look at, I want you to look at Shen Lim's face uh, this whole time, ready? So the one card is obviously the one that can change color. Look at this guy's face, ready? He's like, yeah boy, you know it. Peep it, let's go. Look at that face right there. Look at that. He's like, man, I know you know it. This is your card. I know you already know. I know you do, but check it out as your card, man. All I have to say is his magic might be very amateurish, but I love, love the performing charisma and swag. Like, look at that guy. Look at that. All right, he's growing on me. All right, let's continue. Look at this guy. I love this guy. All right. Yeah, boy. Yeah. All right. So we hands her the card. Okay. So make sure you don't touch it. Blank card. I will say, I really like how he cues the music at dramatic parts of the performance. So I think it actually adds to it. Like the music is, the music is welling up. We know something really cool is about to happen. And because I knew something really cool was about to happen, I was able to hit pause directly at the moment of suspense for you guys. All right, so let's continue. Ooh, okay. So he takes the blank card. Bam, bam, it's clean. I'm not really sure how that one's done to be completely honest. I'm gonna assume it's a gimmick or something like that. Sorry, I got some in my mouth, I don't know what's from. Yeah, I'm gonna have to assume that's a gimmick. You know what, this is, you know, I'll give him his props. This is actually the first thing he got past me. Uh, really well made gimmick, I would assume. I have no idea how he could have done that. But I mean, I still caught like, you know, 95% of the trick so far. So let's just, let's just move on. And she has the blank card, okay. That's pretty cool. I'll give him, that's pretty cool. Good job. So we're gonna take the two cards, drop them down. We've got normal playing, obviously. You know, I got the same ones here. Bicycle playing cards. Still can't believe he's using bicycle playing cards. Okay. Oh, okay, I see what he's doing. Okay, so rather than make this video 15 minutes long and explain what's happening right there, I'm just gonna let you guys know that's called the paintbrush change. There's thousands of tutorials on YouTube for it. It's just a simple paintbrush change. And if you look that up, you'll see how that part's done. Check it out.
Okay. Wait. I think I know what's gonna happen here. The car's gonna be in the envelope. Yeah, alright, car's in the envelope, but I, I caught this whole thing, so let me rewind it. I'll show you guys what's going on here. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Okay. Alright, so this is what we want to see. See this flick? Watch when he picks up these two cars really close, okay? Watch. Bam! Did you miss it? <laughs> you probably did. I know. It's, I have supersonic vision, and uh, obviously I saw it, but I'll slow it down for you guys to see. Watch this. So we can hit play. Bam! Right here. Watch. If we enhance the image, watch this. Um, if we just enhance that image and zoom in, you're gonna see really close, just as I suspected, right? Zoom in on the sleeve, and you're gonna see he has something up his sleeve. Um, and that's something, that's the Queen of Spades. So now that you know the Queen of Spades is up his sleeve, let's watch the rest, of it, and you'll catch on, okay? Pick up the envelope, watch, the Queen of Spades is still in the left sleeve, right here, okay? Bam, right there, right there, did you miss it? There's a fishing line reel, okay? It's linked to his elbow and the card that's winding up, up to the uh, envelope, up around his neck, down to his right hand. Watch his right hand, how it moves. See that movement right there? The reel pulled the string of the card all the way around the back of his neck. Boom, slid it right in the envelope. It was a good one though. Almost got it past me, but I caught it, right? I gotta come back to this for a second. Now, obviously, like I said, I'm breaking down this magic. I'm slicing through it like it's butter, all right? This is no, the magic is not an issue for me to figure out, but I have to respect this guy's performing swag. Look at this guy right here. Look at him. He's like, yeah, there's one card in here. You already know it's the queen of spades. Let's watch this guy's face. It's incredible. Yeah, boy. And wait for it. Look at that. Look at that smug little smile, right? He winked. He just winked. Bam. He's just like, mm, what's up? This is like when you kill someone in Fortnite, right? And you hit that little dab email. You're just like, boom, right? Heavy shotgun right in the noggin and a boom. Okay, uh, let's change. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. She, <laughs> she wants to swipe right. All right, so he puts the card back in, okay? Ooh. Okay, so that is a, uh, for those of you who are wondering how that's done, that's a, one-handed fan, and uh, you can learn the one-handed fan on YouTube a lot. This is an example of, like I said, I'm an expert in cardistry and magic. Magic, obviously, but cardistry. And uh, this is a great example of a perfect one-handed fan. So his is a little bit off, but I'll give him a break since he's using clear cards. So he's got a one-handed fan, and then uh, he's holding another part of the deck in dealer's grip. Um, and he's using see-through cards, in case you're wondering how that was done. So see through cards and okay, yeah, he's showcasing all the cards are clear, right? Okay, then he's riffling through them. This is just a basic riffle. Oh, and the cards at the back. Yeah. So if you're wondering how that's done, uh, cards are all over the floor here. Let me find another deck here. Um, okay, we'll just use these ones. Uh, it's just a riffle. Okay, so you're just riffling. You just hold the deck like this and you riffle. So that's how it's done. Okay, let's just, let's finish this one up real quick. He asked her to put it back in the middle. All right. She pushes it in. He puts it down. Hand down. Ooh. No, no. No. I was really starting to gain respect for this guy. And I always respected America's Got Talent, but it's just like, the only way that's possible is if they modified the uh, the judge's ring here. Let's just check this out. Right, the smoke starts coming the second her ring hits the deck. And I'm really disappointed that the judges or the production staff would be in on it and insert a jewel. You know what I mean? Like a jewel with smoke vapor and uh, nicotine into her, into her ring. I mean, that's just kind of disappointing. I'm just really upset they would put the uh, the judges in on it to produce just smoke. Uh, it's kind of disappointing. Um, really killed my vibe. All right, let's continue. That is my name. Oh my god, and my name is inside of like glass or something. Okay, so this is a classic. <laughs> he kind of has a lot of. Uh, a lot of guts doing this on TV, if I'm being honest, because this is a classic 
sound misdirection. That's not a chunk of ice or glass. That's actually just the see-through cards. And what he's doing is he's doing a sound misdirection. Have you ever pretended to hit your friend or make someone think you're hitting something and you punch and then punch yourself at the same time? So like for you guys, I'm boom, boom, boom. It looks like I'm punching you. I'm really punching myself. I do this a lot because I'm tall. If I'm walking under a doorway, I'll pretend like I hit my head on the doorway and like hit myself and be like, ah, oh. and everyone's like, oh my gosh, are you okay? So what he's doing here is he's showing the deck, right? We'll like knock it on the side of my face. Hear that noise? Doesn't sound too solid, right? This couldn't be a block of glass. Watch this though. You weren't ready for this, right? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it's so simple yet so brilliant. All right, all right, let's continue. Okay, he puts the deck back in of see-through cards. All right, I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you guys. I have no idea how that last thing was done where he torn it. Um, I've never really had a magic trick slip by me like that. Uh, I've watched it a few times now. Um, he puts the block in. And it's just torn. It, it makes no sense. Watch. Solid block. Bam. Ready? Camera switch. You guys see that camera switch? I should have known to use a camera trick here. Obvious edit, obvious camera cut. So it's kind of disappointing that you would end it with some fake magic, but I guess you had to edit to stay up with the uh, the cool kids these days. But overall, guys, I feel like I figured out about 99.9% .9 of that trick. Uh, really basic stuff, but I also like this guy's performing charisma. So uh, Shin Lim, I think is how you say the name. I'm not entirely sure. Like I said, he's... He's not really well known at all, but I think if he sticks with the magic and keeps showcasing the magic with his charisma, if he just keeps at it, I really think he has a shot at making a career out of this. Maybe he could start some kids birthday parties and move up in the world, but I think he has some potential, all right? He's just got to hone his craft and work on it. And I think he could, uh, he could make something out of this. <laughs> all right, guys, that is the first pilot episode of Explaining and Exposing Magic. If you want any magic acts that are viral and you want explained, be sure to let me know down in the comments below so I can make magic better and stronger together by breaking it down so we can build it back up. If you enjoy this type of content, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more. And if you want to see the same content on this channel recycled three weeks later by more popular YouTube channels. Um, and lastly, I don't want to say it in this video, but if you are confused, read the description.